All right, first off, if you're a dad, you gotta start tucking your t-shirts into your shorts, all right? Um, there's just rules to this world, and that's one of them. I'm, hell yes, we're gonna take your AR-15, your AK-47. <laughs> Are you sure about that? It's a good place. Here we are in the middle of it, right up on the mountain. If this son of a bitch wants to bitch about his cows over here, and shoot at me, well, it's our country. All right, <clears throat> what's up, you two? Uh, this is going to be kind of like an intermediate part for our Minuteman series. Uh, we'll call this part four, just for simplicity's sake. It's going to be the squad makeup for a Minuteman squad. Um, each one of these positions is going to get its own video, in-depth video. Some of them will be significantly more in-depth than others. There's going to be a lot of overlap. So some stuff won't get covered in videos, and I will explain that more when I get to the Rifleman video, or when I post it. Alright, so let's start with the Minuteman squad. The first question is, uh, how many men should be in a Minuteman squad and why? Well, my answer is going to be 13. Why 13? Well, I guess you can't see that, so let me... We'll go. 13. Why 13 men? Why not 9 like a regular Army infantry squad? Well, here's the big reason. We're not. We're not, right? We're not a regular Army infantry squad. We don't have grenade launchers. Uh, we don't even necessarily have automatic weapons. There's workarounds for that, but there's no workaround for grenade launchers. I'm sorry. If you hear my ducks, sorry, get over it. Um, yeah, so we don't have the firepower they do, so what we can do is increase, increase the firepower through numbers. So I think a good squad is 13 to 15. Um, this is challenging. Okay, um, uh, maybe you could say it's a little hypocritical of me because I don't have a 13-man squad right now as, as a civilian. Um, that is going to change when something happens. If the Chinese paratroopers jumped in, that would change immediately. Uh, so you can still train for a 13-man squad even if you don't have 13 men right now. And it'll still be beneficial. Okay, because you're going to have a lot of people that are not going to be trained, but you're still going to need a way to utilize them. So prepare for... Uh, this is... My way of doing it. My 13-man squad, let's say that. So what are the positions? We have squad leader, team leader times two, or one team leader, one assistant squad leader. Differences being an assistant squad leader needs to be um, significantly more proficient than a team leader. His job is to assist the squad leader. Kind of like a uh, assistant patrol leader. All right. Then you have Rifleman. Auto Rifleman. RTO. MG. Marksman. Alright. Now these are all the different positions. So you're going to have a squad leader, two team leaders, Two auto riflemen, let me say that, an RTO, an MG, a marksman, if you have someone with that ability. Let me explain that a little bit more in depth. A marksman is not a loadout, okay? You don't make a DMR loadout, buy an SR-25, and all of a sudden you're a marksman. You don't slap a 2x15 on top of your AR-15 and you're a marksman. That's somebody with that skill set. Could it be your best shot? Sure, it could. But it's somebody who needs to be a marksman. They need to be a good shot. They need to have a very, very professional understanding of the principles of marksmanship. All right. One MG, one marksman. So what's that? Put us at right there. Put us at one, three, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So right there you have eight. 
the other five to seven are riflemen. So for this, we'll just say five. Five riflemen. This can also be a rifleman, the marksman. All right. Now, let's talk about the breakdown of this. All right, here is the breakdown for this squad. There's gonna be one other breakdown that is uh, more specific to my area, maybe yours too, depending on where you live. But let's go over this first. This is just the general breakdown of the structure of the 13-man Minuteman squad. Fire teams. Two identical fire teams. You have a team leader, two rifles. Why two rifles? Well, we don't have grenadiers. Um, if you ever, for some reason, had the ability to uh, have grenadiers, however you figure that out, um, maybe you acquire that, you know, uh, when the Chinese invade, whatever. Uh, yeah, this is all for LARPing purposes, by the way. And then an auto rifleman. Two identical fire teams in that makeup. Four men, team lead, rifle, rifle, auto rifle. Why the auto rifle? Well, it gives you the ability to have a um, suppressing fire weapon that is easily maneuverable, that can maneuver with the maneuver elements. Next, HQ. You can have your squad leader. This is the big dog. He's in charge of everything. You got your RTO. He's here to assist with the communications of this guy, right? This guy can carry two radios, but he doesn't need to. He's got this guy. He carries his radio to communicate to the squad. He's going to carry the radio to communicate to who's ever above him. MG. What's the difference between the MG and the auto rifle? The MG is just a higher caliber. All right, this is going to be um, it, just that simple. It's, it's a higher caliber. It's going to be more suppressive fire. Bigger rounds make bigger sounds. All right, bigger rounds defeat bigger cover. All right, so that's the difference between the MG and the auto rifle. Uh, it's the same primple principles, which I suppose I should have covered with the auto rifles. Uh, auto rifles and MGs can both be accomplished by a binary trigger, a heavier barrel, and some type of bifo. Uh Klein machining RPK comes to mind. Uh, Risky Krisky, I think, covered that um, also. But yeah, that's that's a way to do that. There's no civilian way to do grenade launchers. That's why it's not covered in here. There's just not. Uh, marksman already covered that if you don't have that ability cool it's another rifleman um don't just make anybody a fucking marksman because what you made is a uh, waste of ammo that's what you made right because if you just designate somebody a marksman who's not a marksman you're just wasting ammunition um and then another rifle what's this other rifle's purpose to carry shit whatever that may be to carry stuff uh ammo for an mg Maybe we get ourselves hands on fucking uh, Chinese ATG weapons. That's what he's there for. All right. Now, when we come back, we are going to um, briefly cover the... Uh, oh, man, I'm having a brain fart. This is going to stay in here. When we come back, we're going to briefly cover um, my setup uh, for a 13-man minute squad. All right, now we have kind of my layout for a 13-man minute squad. Um, my historical reference philosophy of use comes from the British jungle squad during the uh, Malaysian crisis in the 50s. Or was it me and more? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyways, the reason I went with this is because of the word jungle. Now, how are they using this? Um, they had a scout group that would go ahead of the rest of the squad, and they were brush beaters. They were there to cut through thick terrain. I live in the Midwest. It is not a jungle by name, but holy shit. Go try to run through a Midwest forest around late June, early July. You're gonna make it 20 feet before you're just stuck with briars. So that is kind of this is kind of my philosophy of use. That's the historical preference I'm, or reference I'm taking from. This is my layout. So on a movement, you would have a, squad, a scout group, one of the team leaders, um, marksman. If you have it, if not, it's another rifleman and a rifleman. Their job is to scout ahead, clear paths, make paths, look for paths. Scouting, pretty pretty um, self-explanatory, but it's not. Um, this needs to be your best team leader. Okay, I'll put the other guy back here, right? He's, he, he, he can just follow. This needs to be somebody who's very, very reliable. 
and this guy. They need to be very reliable when it comes to land navigation, um, <clears throat> surveillance, stuff like that. Not necessarily, maybe surveillance is the bad way of putting that. Uh, observation would be the word I would use. Surveillance has a uh, kind of different um, ring to it. Then you have your HQ element moving behind them. You have your squad leader, RTO. They're always together. They're inseparable. Your RTO should be glued to the squad leader's hip. If you're the squad leader, you should be able to do this. You should be able to do this and be able to reach your fucking RTO. The MG and his AB are right behind here. If these guys get in contact, we need to get them some fire support immediately. So we're going to get the big gun in there, the MG. Then behind them, we have our rifle. Um, I don't know why I have support in there. Support would be over here, but nonetheless, it's there. This is your rifle um, fire team. They're here to maneuver, right? So we got the big dog. We got the big MG. He's going to set up a support by fire. Now we got four rifles, two auto rifles to maneuver, set up local support by fires, and flank. That is kind of my setup for a 13-man 13 13 rifle squad and my envision for the group breakdown. Um, there's that. Those are the two ways I would do it. Um, if I'm in the woods, I'm using this. 100% of the time, I'm using this. Uh, if maybe for some reason you're not in the woods, if I, if I find myself not in the woods in a more urban environment, then I'm probably just going to break it down into the two fire teams and the uh, HQ element. Which, uh, this is essentially the same, but that squad scout group is serving a different purpose than the fire team. So yeah, that's my breakdown of it. I suppose we can go into um, each individual role for a quick second. The Rifleman is self-explanatory. Um, these are going to probably be people who weren't necessarily, might not even have been training. When whatever happens, happens. Might not even have been training. And now, um, you need warriors. So there it is. They might not even be fucking great warriors. They're probably not going to be. Okay? This is your Rifleman. Everybody is a rifleman. This is what the base of every single position is based off of when it comes to gear and etc. Which is the least important, but when it comes to gear and stuff, everything is essentially based off the rifleman for all these positions. Even the auto rifleman. The only people who really differ is marksman and uh, assistant gunner. So that covers the rifleman. Um, they are they they are that they these are the workhorse of the squad. The MGs, your auto rifles, they are there to facilitate the riflemen to get in and conduct actions. It's that simple. The MGs and your auto rifles are there for support. Your squad leader and team leader are there for direction. The riflemen are the ones completing tasks. They are the one throwing grenades into bunkers. They are the ones getting into the trenches. That's them. All right. Auto riflemen. Auto riflemen are the local support for the fire teams. It's that simple. That is the firepower that is local, that is in the fire team. The MG, uh, that is the big dog, that is the big gun, that is the one that is really going to be putting people's heads down in the squad. Marksman, we've already been over the marksman, we're not going to cover it again. Uh, team leaders, these just need to be competent individuals that understand squad level tactics, which we're not going to cover in this video that is a uh, topic for another day the only thing i will say on squad level tactics is maybe don't focus so much on training like your enemy maybe start looking at the people who have fought your enemy and i'll leave it at that so yeah these t the team leaders they need to have a very very firm grasp <coughs> excuse me on squad level tactics not team level tactics, squad level tactics. They need to know their team's place like the back of their hand. There needs to be no doubt of what their next steps are um, when it comes to conducting battle drills. Um, your squad leader, it goes out without saying, he needs to be incredibly knowledgeable. Okay? He needs to have... Um, how, can, how should I explain this? He needs to be an expert in every single one of these tasks. Without debate, he needs to be an expert in every single one of these tasks. From his team leaders, 
his RTOs, his MGs, his auto rifles, his riflemen, every battle drill that could be conducted by that person, he needs to be an expert in it. And the big one is, is the RTO. Uh, infantrymen have a bad fucking habit of not knowing how to use their radios and fill them and shit and just giving it to uh, the RTO to fix. That's a big fucking problem. Okay? He needs to be an absolute expert in small unit tactics, squad level tactics. He needs to understand bigger operations. He needs to be able to give a brief, a coherent, clear, concise brief of operations. That's the big one. Another thing. Um, squad leaders have an issue with is briefing anything more than their piece you need, he needs to have an understanding as a minute man you need to be looking steps up okay this isn't this isn't your rifle squad right you don't got a platoon mommy and a platoon daddy to take care of you you need to be taking a bigger picture up all right his little henchman the rto the rto is probably next to the team leaders Actually, yeah, next to the team leaders, he is the squad leader's biggest asset. That radio communication. Number one, he's communicating up. He's communicating up. He's letting the squad leader know what's going on adjacent um, and above him. Number two, this RTO is going to need to carry batteries. Baofeng batteries aren't that fucking heavy. He needs to be carrying batteries for everybody with a radio. Whoever's got a radio, he needs to carry batteries for it. I recommend three batteries per. He needs to have a way to charge them, okay? A solar panel, something like that. The other thing the RTO needs to have, I'm not going to make a separate position for this. Um, historical context for him about to mention, the Ukraine war. He needs to have a drone, okay? The RTO is uh, going to have a dual position as a drone operator. Can he do both? Absolutely can. If you don't think he can do both, then snatch a rifleman. But drone operator is 100% a position that needs to be filled in a modern Minuteman squad. It does. Um, with the technology, it's perfectly accessible. It is less than the cost of a, another rifle, which I know most of you out there are planning on buying another fucking gun. Get a drone. That's the big thing for the RTO. Uh, he needs to have more capabilities when it comes to radios. He doesn't necessarily need a better radio than the squad leader because we really shouldn't be talking on high frequency or um uh, uh <clears throat> he really shouldn't be talking on um high frequencies that are gonna be talking for miles and miles and miles. He should have the ability to boost signal, etc. So he needs to have a little bit more antenna capabilities. He needs to have the ability to um uh, uh do field expedient antennas also. So he needs a little bit more capabilities when it comes to radios. He needs to know radios like the back of his hand, how to set up, how to um, uh, not fill radios. Jesus, I'm really going back to the military now. But how to set up radios, how to teach it, etc. He needs to have a good comms plan, a good pace plan. Uh, he needs to know how to, you know, he needs to be the one setting up these radios. Um, other things he needs to be able to do. Let's have a clear gl gr grasp on troubleshooting. This is, you know, he needs to be the radio expert. It should go without saying, but this person needs to be an expert in radio. Whether you're sending them to some course uh, to get that knowledge or they already have it, whatever. But this needs to be somebody who has uh, some expertise in radios. All right, I'm not going to break down the individual positions anymore. Um, they will have their own videos. But I just wanted to show my take on a uh, Minuteman squad. So this is Jay's take on a 13-man Minuteman squad. All right, guys. Let me know what your takes on this are, what you would do different, what yours would look like, and uh, stuff I can improve. And I'll tell you why I'm the smartest person I know. I'm just kidding. All right, guys. Till next time. Talk to you later. Bye.